Calculations. Correct. Okay, here you go. There you go. You want to check if it's okay? Wait, this is not the real thing. What do you mean? Why are you sipping down? This isn't a tie, this is a prototype. Why is this in your shirt? What? What? Okay, you know what? I think you're onto something. This looks to me like the ramp. All right, so for our design process, uh, we started with watching all of the videos as one big group, just so that everyone could get a pretty good general idea of what the game was going to look like this year, what the map would look like, and all that fun stuff. After that, we divided ourselves into three groups of about four or five apiece, and from there we went off and started to brainstorm on our own. Just for that brainstorming, we started with seeing where all of our points would come from, with uh, what strategies we wanted to use, and so after that, once we decided on what strategies we thought would be best, we came up with different mechanisms and different robot designs Try and figure out how we could best execute these strategies. So we decided to pursue two main main strategies in building our robot. So the first one, is so we realized the mo the way to get the most points is to get to level the level three on the platform at the end of the end of the match. So we decided that we'd be really valuable to alliance members if we could help our alliance members up to that platform. So what our what our main part we have a ramp so that as the match ends up we move on to level one of the platform and then we deploy a ramp which our alliance members can drive up onto the third level. And then before the match ends, we retract, retract the ramp so that we're completely inside the third, mm -hmm. first level. The second strategy we're pursuing is to, is to put all the low hatches in place. The loader, for the loader, loader in the human player station for the hatches are at, is at the same level of all the, all the hatch, hatches that you can place on the car, cargo ship and the low, one, low hatches on the rocket. So then the arm does not have to move at all. Okay, whenever you want. Okay, so here we have mechanism one. And some of the challenges we needed to face was the ramp had to be inside the perimeter or the chassis of the robot at the starting. And also we had an initial height of nine inches. So we had to figure out a way to uh, bridge the gap between the ramp and the ground. And so one of the, way we, one of the ways we thought was to have a ramp, to have a platform kind of open up with a motor. But that was kind of hard because we need a really strong motor and we didn't have like a guarantee that would support the weight of, a, of another robot. So here we have mechanism two. This is the final idea that we went with. Uh, it's a sliding mechanism where the last 26 inches kind of slides in, slides out to uh, fill the gap, the two feet by nine inches gap. All right, so the challenge this year involves a combination of hatches and cargo and climbing onto platforms, pretty much for points. So the group sat down and decided that we thought the hatches were the most important since the balls won't stay in without the cover to stop them from falling out. So these are the things that should kind of be placed first. And we decided to work on this. So we need to be able to like pick these up and move them around. And the team thought of grabbing them on the outside. They thought of like sticking Velcro things to the Velcro bits on them and then carrying them around like that. But that would make it hard to get the Velcro off. We thought we could maybe like punch it off. Um, another idea was to kind of grab it from the inside with a hook or with like arms, kind of claws, and that's the idea we decided to go with. So spent today kind of hashing out a few different ideas and got together a little like mini claw. Um, we'll show you how it works. So this is kind of what it looks like and it consists of these gears here and um, it will be placed on the front of our robot just right below the ramp and it'll start in this position. You can see there's no interference here because of the size of the gears. And this way it maintains in our frame at the beginning because of the size restrictions. So we start like this, and then we'll rotate the gears, and it can be placed forward even in a bit. We go ahead and grab the hatch and rotate out, and it's grasped pretty firm here. And then we can drive around, and then when we want to place it against the hatch target, 
we have these metal supports here so we can push, really adhere it to that Velcro, and then uh, rotate in and release. And there you go, you've placed your hatch and you're ready to put your cargo in.